it means a lot right. to him. Yeah, it has been. And now the game is underway. We see that move Knight F3 played by Andrake in D5, the standard choice by Wesley So. So I guess bef- as we get into this match, before we see any results, we do need to ask a question to the chat because we want you to get involved. So with the game starting, Coinbase wants to hear from you. Who will be our first rapid chess champion? You have four people to choose from. Make Robert your choice. Hess is not one of them? No, no, no. He is gladly off the list. Mm. <laughs> That's a real shame. I don't want 0% of the vote, you know? <laughs> <laughs> In the meantime, we have a pretty interesting opening. Dimitri and Draken going off the beaten path of this move, C2, C3. Now, C4, Robert, leads to a very topical line of the Grunfeld. C3 is a move that was previously championed by Vladimir Kramnik. It is often followed, oddly enough, by queenside expansion with A4. There it is. <laughs> and you just get a position. Yeah. And, I mean, when we look at this and on Draken with the white pieces, he probably doesn't want to test Wesley in prep, like long lines of preparation. He wants to just get a position what he's comfortable with, and this is exactly one of those. Look, look at this position. You can put A5 for white. You can play knight e5. You have options here, so it's not like you have to stick to just a single plan, but knight e5 does seem to be a principled approach with a5 to follow. Yeah, putting putting together some early queenside pressure. Uh, I don't really see a downside to, to starting with a move a5. I mean, knight e5 seems a little bit more committal, uh, but starting with a5 looks perfectly perfectly reasonable now one thing to decide for black is where to put the light skirt bishop because the hyper fianchetto bishop c8 to a6 actually makes more sense to me here uh, than the more conventional uh, development uh, to b7 robert do you are you on the same page about this yeah, yeah it's a more open diagonal bishop b7 you like to say this Danya. bad bishops defend good pawns and it's protecting that great pawn on d5 but bishop a6 it shuts down the a file it doesn't allow white to thrust that pawn forward to a6 himself. And that was Wesley So's choice. Good call, Tanya. <laughs> just as I was making the move, he played it. <laughs> just grab that bishop right from your hand. Uh, right. So rude. Honestly, <laughs> Wesley is, I mean, like, very consistent with his overall pattern of behavior. <laughs> um, yeah, not uh, one of the most humble people on the face no, of the no, earth. No, 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 definitely no. not. Constantly bragging about his achievements, how well he did in the <laughs> RCC, even <laughs> tweeting about it constantly. <laughs> uh, but in oh. any case, so, so Andrake now has to decide where to put these two pieces. Now, Bishop F4 is the standard uh, development of the bishop in such positions, as far as I know. Yes. You and, could, could well, I was going to quickly say, Donna, that a lot of players would take on B6 immediately because they want to open up the rook on A1. But that tension is not going anywhere. In fact, the tension favors white because look at the rook on A8. It stares into its own pawn, whereas white's rook has much more space on this file for the moment. So why give black access to that same line? Yeah, white is the one who knocks on the A file. And black is not about to go B6, B5 and create a gaping hole on C5. No. No, no, no. And that bishop on a6 that we were just praising would be terrible all of a sudden with a pawn directly in front of it. So uh, c5 is a much more likely play from Wesley's perspective. And mm-hmm. I don't easily see a plan for Dimitri. Okay, knight b to d2. It feels like not the London system exactly, but just like in the London system, sometimes you put all your pieces on perfect squares. And then the question becomes, what now? So, Daniel, what are you seeing from Dimitri's perspective? What does he like about his position? Well, he likes the fact that he has more space on the queen side. He likes the fact that Wesley is, you know, somewhat cramped and tied down on the queen side, and Dimitri controls some of the dark squares, uh, particularly if Wesley plays the move c5. But this is a very familiar situation to me, where I, I, you realize that, that this moment will occur about two or three moments before it actually does. You're like, I, I still have a couple developing moves left, but very soon I'm going to be in a situation where I'm going to have no idea what to do. And... I am, much like you, worried that after Wesley plays c5, Dimitri will reach that moment when you've made all the developing moves, you've dotted your I's and crossed your T's. What do you have to show for it? I mean, you can't win a game with a space advantage. Maybe no. he won. Are you going to go e4? Is that your plan? I'm thinking about flirting with it. I guess you also allow your queen to move. So rookie one is sort of dual purpose. You may push that pawn, but at the very least, you protect the pawn e2, and that way your queen can go out to a square like a4, and maybe there are places to infiltrate from there. Another idea that I have, Danya, is maybe 
I don't know if it works. Can I throw throw in a bishop d6 first and then play knight e5, or am I actually going to get my bishop trap? Well, yeah, you're basically, you know, telling your minor pieces to go handle themselves. <laughs> and whatever happens, happens. You're on your own now. <laughs> yeah, just deal with the consequences. It's not my responsibility. But anymore. it's not easy to access that bishop on d6 because if the knight on d7 moves away, then the c5 pawn hangs. Right. So it's definitely an interesting idea. Okay, well, rookie eight takes the sting out of bishop b6, so now that mm -hmm. would be a pretty nonsense move. So, all right, <laughs> Dana, no, no, we've reached everything that we could have possibly asked for. Is it time for e4? Are there other moves to make, like a queen move? You can play h3 or even h4 <laughs> if you feel like yeah, just pushing Yeah, you can always play h3. You know? <laughs> There's always that. And then Wesley will play h6. And then maybe g4. And then maybe g5. g5. <laughs> right. <laughs> just, bishop g3. King yeah. h8. <laughs> just little moves here and there. And when in doubt, start playing on the king side. 95. Uh -huh. There we finally see it. The knight jumps forward. And well, black, I guess, doesn't want to take on e5, not because of d takes e, but bishop takes e5 feels a little bit annoying over there. So can I make a different move for what about knight h5 here for black? Yeah, knight h5 looks pretty pesky, actually. Wait a moment, knight h5. What is white going to do? Because if white plays knight takes d7, says no problem, I'm just going to move my bishop back. No, no, no. Black's going to take on f4 first, right? And this is not a positive transformation of the structure for white. Black is better here. The bishop pair, the healthier pawn structure, right. and thereby the safer king, if you want to look at it that way. The knight on d2, not in the game. So I think Dimitri overlooked knight h5. And yeah. Danya, from an early stage, you're saying, oh, white is comfortable, safe. But look at Dimitri's clock, by the way. He has never found a plan in this game. He's making logical moves, but without an actual overarching plan. And now Wesley, well ahead in the clock, and I think his position is better. Yeah, Dimitri has to find a way to twist himself out of this position. There is this weird idea of going bishop g5. Uh, you can do that immediately. You can do that here. And after queen takes g5, knight takes d7, you're attacking oh. b6. But Wesley can just drop the queen back to d8, force the knight back to e5, and say, hey, I've got the two bishops. I'm happy. Yeah, although at least the pawn structure isn't compromised from Dimitri's perspective. But of course, Wesley is better in this position. So Dimitri, look at it. He just actually, he raised his eyebrows like, oops, didn't see this one coming. This is just as great of a position as you could possibly ask for from Wesley So's perspective. And it's a good sign if you're a Wesley fan. Yeah, and this is just what he does. He never beats himself. He, he He's so consistent. He plays healthy moves, and he just makes you look like, not like a fool, that's the wrong word, but when you're playing Wesley, you know, you just don't feel good about your position, no matter what position you have. Did you see, by the way, that Wesley pre-moved A takes B6? Yeah, that's a, that's a <laughs> badass move right there. Yeah, it's like, not only is he just one of the best chess players in the world, given each player hours, He's saying, I actually know how to play bullet chess with the best of them, and he does. And he pre-moved A takes B6 to put Dimitri right back on the he, clock. He crushed me in a blitz match yesterday. He was incredible. Well, he, he beat me. He was incredibly <laughs> fast. Yeah. And he pre-moves. He knows how to time scramble. He doesn't have any obvious Achilles heels as no. a blitz player. No, he doesn't. I mean, he really has that style that, uh, as you're saying, you don't want to play Dimitri on Draken. You also don't really want to play Wesley So. And right now, I think Dimitri is the less happy of the two. And Wesley's up four minutes on the clock. Yeah, we're talking, we're shooting the breeze. In the meantime, Dimitri's under four minutes. I've been thinking about Queen A4 here, but that is obviously not a move you make if you're enthralled to their position. No. I'm just trying to find some way to resolve the tension in the center. Yeah, queen a4 is a way to do that, but I think black will still take the bishop on f4 and then deal with uh, the knights aiming at each other after that. So, Yeah, I guess you can just take. No, yeah, that's, that's not serious. Well, knight d7 is played, and now knight takes f4 seems automatic. Or is there a difference now that the pawns have been traded? No, I don't think so. No, I think you take, because knight takes b6, there's always knight takes e2 check. Right. So Dimitri's going to play e3. You know what's funny about positions like this, Danya? I always feel like, okay, black has to be better. And then I look at this bishop on g7, 
and I look at all of White's pawns on dark squares, and I'm like, do I really have the advantage when my bishop is blockaded by these pawns? And so the answer, the solution might be to play cd4 at some point and bishop f8 to improve uh, the scope of your bishop. That's actually a great positional idea. And would you consider doing it immediately? Just right here and right now, c takes d4? I'm a little nervous to release the tension. We've been talking about that a lot throughout the days of commentary here. And so uh, Wesley says, no, let me let me keep that alive. And does this give Dimitri an opportunity in any way? That's what in knight f3, knight e5, you're putting a queen a4 as well. Yeah, queen a4 could be a little bit annoying for black because it limits the scope of this bishop. You don't want to go bishop d3. You don't want to give away the two rooks for the queen. No, definitely not. Especially because white will have total domination over the only open file. Right. And actually, if you put bishop b7, queen b5 seems right. really annoying to me. And there's all sorts of tactical shenanigans that might uh, negatively impact black's chances here. For example, if we extend that line after queen c6, white can take and drop a knight on c4. Oh. And before you know it, you're under a lot of pressure. Your pawn on b6 is a full-fledged weakness. No, oh, that's actually a frustrating line. And once you see it, you realize that a queen trade may sound good, but it's not getting you much. So B5 good move. is Wesley's choice. It, it is definitely a good move, but one major drawback of this is if Dimitri can play knight B3, his knight might land on C5, and then you regret the fact that your pawn is no longer on B6. For sure. So Wesley will have to follow this up very accurately in this position. Maybe C4. But C4 could be met by B4 if Dimitri really wants to close things up. <laughs> It's weird to have queen your queen is, on queen A5. Queen is almost strapped there. Yeah. <laughs> it's but it very can evacuate strange. to A2 if necessary. Right. And the bishop can't go to B7, which would trap the queen if the pawn on B5 was defended. So that's the big problem for black is the bishop stuck there. And I think with that head shake there, and now with some time consumption, Wesley not thrilled. I think he believed he would have a bigger or more clear advantage. But Dimitri, he is just a frustrating player. He's just annoying. I mean, he just knows how to get under your skin in any position. Right, and the knight might get under black skin of knight b3 to yeah. c5. So knight b3, what does Wesley have under his sleeve? Uh, he better okay. show us real quick, because I'm actually starting to get worried about his position. Yeah, once the knight hits c5, you might lose this pawn. And if you lose this pawn, then the position starts to crumble. Wait a minute, c4... No, knight. you don't have bishop b7 after knight c5. There's a cool line after c4, knight c5, bishop b7. It's a totally moot point because white can just play knight takes b7. For sure. And the queen on d6 is the under queen. attack. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so there is something long-term we should talk about. If we look at white's pawn structure, all of these mm -hmm. pawns are in dark squares. So if c4 and later b4, things like that, even with opposite color bishops, it could still be dangerous for white because these pawns can be attacked by a black's bishop. Black's pawns, on the other hand, the pawn chain is as strong as its base pawn. Good luck getting to the pawn on f7. I mean, that's untouchable. Right. That's a great point. But, I mean, Wesley's dreaming of such an endgame right now. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's a little bit far away from it. So c takes d4 seems to me more, more logistically doable than c4 right those cd cd of course we're not going to take with the e pawn to make our f4 pawn uh, loose so uh, what's your no again before knight c5 Jeez. you know what might be the best thing to do is play cd4 cd4 and just bishop b7 give up your b5 pawn mm -hmm. and just try to get activity because the bishop on a6 is a truly terrible piece and it's also making your other pieces worse because you're tied down to its defense i also think he does have a way to bail out this line i mentioned to you earlier c5 uh, c4 and bishop b7 i abandoned hope quickly but i actually think this might be the most prudent option if we bring up the analysis board your queen takes b5 bishop c6 i think traps oh. the queen believe it or not I and white it. can but the most important thing is white cannot get two rooks for the queen because the bishop defends a8. Now, I pointed out that white is knight takes b7. He absolutely does. But you, your point, I think, is very well taken here. Black is most certainly not worse. If I had to choose a side, I would actually probably take black, despite the fact that white 
holds ownership over the A file. Right, and that's this is the exact type of position I was foreshadowing. So thanks for bringing it uh, to the board here for us. And C four is Wesley's going to bring it to the board. Okay, and after knight c five, do you have any other choice besides playing bishop b seven? Because your bishop's just under attack over there on a six. I guess rook a seven is a move, but ooh, I, but then knight a six and b five falls. So right, but at least black controls the a file. You're right. You're, you're not ever saying, at least I have this <laughs> after right. dropping I have something to hang my hat on. <laughs> oh, oh, that's super clever. Knight a6 is met by rook b6 now. Typical Wesley idea. Right. Oh. He says, I want your rook a7 to team up on the knight a6, but this is a better way of doing so because b5 remains protected. So if Dimitri doesn't take up, what is Wesley's next move? Is it going to be bishop e7 maybe or something bishop e7 or b4 possibly i say with no degree of confidence oh my b4. goodness oh god we are in for a barn <laughs> burner here dimitri so, just added a load of tabasco to yeah this position he just wants to open this position up because look at that rook on a8 and there's a bishop on g2 that's been waiting in the shadows ready to pounce at the right moment after D E four, Bishop takes E four. I guess Bishop B seven is still possible down here. Oh my God, I was not expecting to do this kind of calculation <laughs> at this at this hour. Bishop B four, Bishop B seven, Knight B seven, and then just take the Queen on A five. And then there's a fizzle out, and the pawn on F four is a huge liability in that resulting end game. And once Black takes it, the Bishop has a direct pathway to C one. Yeah, this seems like Wesley somehow got the best of all worlds here. The end game we were uh, highlighting as possible, and now it's even with a worse pawn structure. So Dimitri thinking, which means he might take on e4 with the knight. But then I think Wesley can get his uh, his his claws out and steal f4, and then what does Dimitri have to show for it? I think Dimitri largely played e4 on an intuitive basis. I don't think that he calculated it too deeply. And now bishop b7. Very nasty move. And Dimitri will just have to try to make a draw in that opposite colored bishop endgame. Okay, so knight takes b7. Looks forced to my eyes. It is. So what's Dimitri thinking about, I guess? I mean, there's no other move here. That's a good question. Every second is golden. This endgame is not going to be easy to defend. Here's the mass trade. Oh, and the rook a8. Yeah, that's what I was about to ask you. Is Rook A just forced to draw? Because Not if it to does, ask you that. Just, just go for it, right? I think it does. I think it does. I think it does. Rook A8, if we very quickly play through the moves, takes, 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 Bishop C6, and you eat up these two pawns just in time. You're going to be down a pawn in the resulting position, but I'm pretty sure why I can hold that. Dimitri, though, choosing a different approach and probably an even more accurate one, going for active defense. But d5. Yes. So kind of a similar idea that he ultimately wants to start trading pawns, even if he loses the f4 pawn. As long as the queen side comes off completely, it's just a uh, complete and utter draw. When you're, you're right. down a pawn, opposite colored bishops, pawns on the same side of the board, uh, the side with the extra material is not going to win. So he's going for rook a8, or he could put his rook on a7 if the bishop lands on d5, and that way f7 is a target. So I think that Dimitri has this handled quite nicely. Yeah, I wouldn't say that this is a three-result game, but, you know, if Wesley does something untoward, you could end up dropping a bunch of pawns here in the blink of an eye. Right. So, like, for example, rook f8, I believe, is a mistake because then yeah. rook b7 happens, and you drop b5, which protects b2, and then c4 is likely to fall next, and that's how you lose games like this. Oh, exactly, exactly. You you lose them by playing a reactive move. You know, oh, F7's hanging, let's defend it. That, that's not how these endgames work. You need to strategically choose which pawns to give away. I think Wesley's going to go Bishop C1, something to that effect. This is just a draw. Yeah, Rook F7. by Dimitri, by the way. No, that Kept was his composure. perfectly executed there. And also good composure by Wesley because it seemed like he overlooked this like queen a5, knight b3 type of maneuver. But instead of freaking out and uh, causing himself some unnecessary issues, he's just like, you know what? I have the black pieces. Let's just make sure that everything remains solid, that I uh, can make a draw at the least. And here we see every pawn is about to be traded. If the rooks are swapped, b2 falls first. 
But after bishop a6, b5 and c4 will fall right next. Yeah, it's so interesting. Black actually takes both of white's pawns first, but then white instantly takes both of black's pawns. Yes, and, and we often offer is forthcoming. We often see this in opposite colored bishop endings. And well, what's was Wesley really thinking, or is he just trying to gather his bearings to you know figure out what he's gonna do with the white pieces? Well, he's either taking yeah, exactly. He's taking the bonus time uh, to 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 think about the opening in the next game. Maybe he's reviewing this game in his head which you sometimes see players do. They're looking at their score sheets, trying to identify where the improvements were, but he takes on C3, accompanies it with a draw offer, which is due to